Hey guys, let's talk about normal lab values and normal values in medicine. Um, I, it's kind of one of my pet peeves when people tell me that they went to see their doctor and their doctor told them that their levels were normal, yet they're suffering from all the symptoms on the list of said condition. Thyroid's one of the easiest ones to pick on. So someone's having symptoms of low thyroid, but their TSH is normal, so the doctor just blows them off and says they don't have hypothyroidism or they don't have low thyroid. In medical school, we're taught to listen to the patient and not rely on labs, yet that's what we've come to today. Now labs are important and labs are useful and we have them, um, but always listen to the patient. So if you're a patient and you're struggling with symptoms that your doctors aren't listening to, either find a new doctor or do your own research, request those labs. There's tons of resources out there like Dr. Hyman, um, Dr. Um, Amy Myers puts out resources on how to work with your doctor on getting the labs that you may need. What are nice ways to ask and what are ways to get the labs without um, being rude or disrespectful because you, you respect your doctor, you need that doctor, um, but you want them to work with you and you believe something a little different and it's okay to investigate that part of your health even if they don't believe it. So let's talk a little bit more about normal lab values. First, my name is Dr. Philip Wu. I'm a practicing functional medicine doctor in Austin, Texas, and we're gonna talk about normal lab values. So I've got some notes here for us to go over. Um, the, 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 the idea that normal lab values are normal, all lab values mean is when a lab um, creates a test, um, or then maybe they're not creating it, but they're deciding that, hey, I'm gonna do cortisol levels, for example. What they do is they sample the population and they take who, the 90% of people that are within a certain range and they call that the normal. So if you're 90% of the population, there's someone that's really low and there's someone that's really high and they're gonna consider that normal. Even if they have a mild form of the disease or, or symptoms, then they're still lumped into the, the normal. So in functional medicine, generally, we've got an optimal level that we're aiming for instead of a, oh, your labs are normal, that's okay. Everything's gotta be in balance, especially hormones. So estrogen and progesterone, for example, even if your estrogen is within normal range for where it's supposed to be, but your progesterone is at zero, that's an imbalance. That's not supposed to be there. So is that progesterone deficiency or is that estrogen dominance? So we have optimal levels that we're looking for and you need to be between certain ranges or above certain ranges, but the hormones also need to be in balance. So for, let's take estrogen and progesterone, for example, typically in the luteal phase on day 21, I'm aiming for um, estrogen levels of 50 to 150 and for fertile females and, um, and progesterone levels around five to 15 or 20. If your estrogen is at 150, but your progesterone is at five, the estrogen's at the upper limit of the normal and the progesterone's at the lower limit of the normal. That's obviously an imbalance. While they're still technically within even my optimal ranges, they're imbalanced. So it's important to look at your labs with that idea of balance more than just what does each level say. That's what computers do and that's why computers can never do medicine, or maybe can never do medicine. Um, we're, we almost have self-driving cars, so it might be around the corner. So it's important to know what normal levels are, but it's also important to know what are optimal levels. And not everyone likes optimal levels. T3 is a good example. I normally aim for over 3.2 on the free T3, but some women just can't handle that much T3. They're, they're anxious, they're, they're, they're speedy, and they don't like it, and they're happy at 2.6, and that's okay. Not everyone needs to hit certain lab values. Cortisol is another one of my pet peeves. When you look at the cortisol levels in the morning, many times you'll be tagged as normal and the upper limit of cortisol goes to 20. We're not supposed to have a cortisol level of 20 in the mornings. You're supposed to be kind of 9, 10, maybe 12. And modern medicine or conventional medicine likes to create these guidelines and rules that if you're not above X number, then you don't have a disease. So use cortisol, for example. Oh, if your cortisol is 12, that's nice and normal, no big deal. But as you get closer to 20, your cortisol is 19, you're still normal. But cortisol 21, that's a problem and we need to talk about it. I, that's not how humans work. Humans work on this grayscale, this spectrum. So 12 might be normal and 20 is abnormal, but some people at 12 will even feel abnormal because they're actually supposed to be at six or eight. So it's important to take your symptoms into, con into consideration more than it is the lab values. So I use a lot of labs and I certainly react to the labs, but more importantly, you gotta listen to the patient. 
Blood pressure is another example. So if your blood pressure is less than 140, if it's 139 over 90 or 89, you're, you're considered to have normal blood pressure, maybe pre-hypertensive, but no big deal. 140 or 141, all of a sudden you're tagged with the blood pressure diagnosis, you've got hypertension, and now you need to be on drugs. Was it a problem at 139? Why is 141 that different? Everything's a grayscale. We're not supposed to have a blood pressure above 130. Our blood pressure is supposed to be at 120 or lower. If you're exercising, if you're eating well, I never see someone that's exercising, eating well, watching their stress levels. They're never over 120. They're always 120 or lower. The body's supposed to be there. So if your blood pressure is creeping up, don't wait until your doctor's telling you you have hypertension. Get on it now. It's time to address it and lower that blood pressure. There was a study I got not that long ago that talked about blood pressure of 115 seemed to have the, the longest um, rate of living. So if your blood pressure uh, average was around 115, then you lived the longest compared to other people who were even at 120 and they had more events. So aim for 115 is what the current levels look like. Um, another example of normal lab values is the HDL cholesterol. The HDL cholesterol is considered your good cholesterol, and it's an excellent prognostic marker of how, if, if you're at risk for heart attacks or not. So if you're a male, we're shooting for the lab, is shooting for a good cholesterol over 40, that's considered optimal. But if you're a female, your good cholesterol is supposed to be over 50. There's not really a big difference between men and women except for genitals. So why do men get a 40 uh, high five, but women don't get a high five unless it's over 50? I think it's safe to say that both men and women need over 50. Yes, it is standard for men to be less than 50, and, and it's good if they're over 40, but chances are that even 50 for them is better, so why aren't we striving for 50 for men? So in my practice, I'm striving for at least 50 for both men and women because I don't want either of them to have a heart attack. And good cholesterol is a marker of good health. Now, not everyone can get there, but we can certainly strive and try. Um, autoimmunity is another good example of normal lab values. So whenever you have autoimmune antibodies, if the lab is reporting that less than 36 is, is normal for say Hashimoto's levels, um, and your level's at 35, then you're considered normal and you don't have a problem. But the second you have 36 or 37, now you have a problem, that's weird to me. So autoimmunity is a spectrum. It can get much worse and it can have remission. So are you in a more of a remission phase, but you're still positive and still autoimmune? I don't know. So it's important to look at those levels and see how close you are to the 90% of the population. And if you're getting closer to that 90%, then you might have a problem. And that goes the same for, um, uh, the 10% too, if you're on the lower side. Um, testosterone's a, a good example. Uh, conventional medicine and insurance companies will tell you that if your testosterone's over 300, then you don't have low testosterone. But if you're 299, now you've got low testosterone. And it's pretty safe to say that there's a spectrum. Some men feel better at 400, some men feel better at 800. And it's important to find the number that works the best for you. Now, we're not using testosterone as a cure-all, treat-all, improve everything, but it's important to know your levels and strive for better levels if you're having symptoms of those, uh, so of low testosterone. And then if you're not looking at the free levels of testosterone, that's another problem. So frequently I will have men that um, are at the lowest level of testosterone even reported by the lab. So I saw a guy earlier today, the lab reports that nine to 36 on the free testosterone is normal and he's 9.7. He's technically normal, but he is at the bottom of the barrel the 10%, there's only 10% of people that are lower than him. And if you looked around the planet at all, if you're looking at the bottom 10% of the planet, those are some pretty unhealthy people. Do you wanna be like those unhealthy people or do you wanna be a better version of yourself? Chances are you wanna be a better version of yourself and you wanna feel better and, and um, behave better. And when you feel better, let's face it, you eat better, you exercise more, you sleep better, everything. Um, Gluten sensitivity is another example of a normal lab value. You're never really supposed to react to gluten. You don't need to, you don't need antibodies towards gluten. It is a food that's supposed to be broken down and your immune system is never supposed to react to it. So if you do your gluten testing, your TTGs, your gliadins and all that, and you're positive, even if it's not above the reference range of the lab and you're reacting to gluten, chances are you might be mildly sensitive to it and not know it. And that shoulder pain or that nasal allergy that you're having might actually be a gluten allergy and not really a gluten sensitivity, sorry, not an allergy, a gluten sensitivity and not anything to do with the mold and the, the pollen that's floating through the air. So look at your lab values, analyze them critically, even if your doctor isn't and um, 
consider being in that gray zone before the full-blown disease kicks in. Um, I think that's all I have in my notes as far as normal lab values. Um, we each have our own optimal levels, so if you're curious, ask a functional medicine doctor, reach out to one, and if you really want your, your labs evaluated, then certainly look up a functional medicine doctor. I hope this was helpful. It was a little bit of a rant to talk about how conventional medicine ignores the people that are closer to the 10% and the 90% um, ranges, and I hope that you can seek out your own optimal levels. If this is helpful, please tag or share it with someone that you think uh, might benefit from it. Thanks, guys.